Well, hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, this is our continuation of our current project, which is the P51B Mustang by Tamiya in 148th scale. And this is the first airplane that uh, we are doing on the channel, so wish me luck. This is construction part two. We're going to be painting the pilot and also assembling the fuselage. So these are the paints that I've chosen to paint our pilot. Uh, and we are still on step one of the assembly and the instructions. <laughs> so. so the first thing we're going to do is use this acrylic uh, flesh color. Uh, now this is craft paint and it is water based. And we're going to put a little bit into our paint palette here. And just a little bit of reducer. Just a drop. Now you need to mix this up really good because these craft paints are kind of thick. And we want it to be easily brushed on. So with this flesh color we're just going to go in and paint our pilot's face and because we are covering black uh, I do have to come in and and uh, put two coats on it that way the black doesn't show through but it's not that big of a deal. We're also going to want to go ahead and paint his hands as well. Now, if you choose to have him wearing leather gloves, you know, you could paint that in. Uh, but I'm just going to paint his hands flesh here. Not too worried about staying inside the lines. Uh, we'll worry about that later when we paint all the surrounding parts of the pilot. Now, once that dries, we're going to use this brown panel liner by Tamiya. Make sure it's shaking up really good. And we're just going to paint right over that flesh color. Now we didn't coat this uh, flesh colored uh, acrylic paint uh, with anything to seal it. So this is going to have a kind of a staining effect. It'll darken up that acrylic paint. And there he is. So he's starting to come together. Now we're going to let that dry. And then we're going to come in with some uh, enamel thinner. This is Tester's enamel thinner. And we're just going to dampen our brush with it. And this is the same process that you would use to clean up any uh, panel liner on, say, a tank or anything. Uh, I first pay attention to the eye sockets, and then we're just going to lightly brush over all the high spots on his face. And we'll do the hands too. Now, this will have the effect of removing that panel liner and leaving it in the recessed areas giving us tonal variation in the face and hands and now he's got a face so I guess we need to give him a name <laughs> next up is XF49 now this is for his pants and I do paint his shirt and his jacket color with a uh, color collar <laughs> can't even talk today but his jacket collar with it and I will come back later and change that. Uh, the collar should actually be the same color as his flight jacket. But not too worried about staying inside the lines right now, but it is kind of good practice for later. So now I'm going to use this earth brown that's also a uh, acrylic craft paint. Now, I didn't have this color in our uh, at the beginning of the video uh, in our paint lineup, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, but I decided that probably the pilot's skull cap should be a little bit darker brown than his jacket. Give us a little bit of color variation, make our figure a little bit more interesting. And so we're going to paint that up with the dark brown. So next up is deck tan. And we're going to be using this to paint his flight vest. And I kind of like this color. Uh, it shows a really good uh, contrast between the other colors that we're going to be using. And so with his flight vest done. And also back for his parachute. All done the same color. So in the instructions, to me it calls out XF57 buff here for his webbing and straps 
And so I do go ahead and paint those up uh, with this color. But it's really hard for you guys to see it because I have to be really close to it because of my bad eyes. So sorry we didn't get that on film. But you can see here, I'm going to have to think about that color because there's not much contrast between the deck tan and the buff. And I'd like for those straps to be more visible. So I'm thinking we're going to change that. So now we have warm brown, another craft paint acrylic. And I'll go ahead and mix that up, thin it out just a little bit. And as you can see here, how the, uh, the paint can be really thick, almost like it's congealed. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll mix that up really good so it'll brush on. And I did get it just a little bit thin, but that's okay. When you're covering a black base, and maybe we should have used gray, but black is fine. Uh, sometimes you have to use a couple of coats to get everything covered. So at this point, we really do need to start paying attention to um, our line separation here between our different colors. And just be careful uh, and take your time. Now these craft paints, they, they really, really paint easily and smoothly. So it's not too much of a, uh, an effort, I should say, unlike the Tamiya acrylics which kind of roll off if you brush back over them while they're still wet. So here I have taken IDF Israeli Sand Gray and painted the straps on this side of our figure. And then on the other side, I used Desert Sand. I'm trying to look at the two different contrasts. I think I like the darker, the IDF better. So yeah. I'm going to go back and I'm going to repaint all of his harnesses and everything with the IDF Israeli Sand Gray. That way we'll be able to see the webbing and, and his belt and everything. Uh, if we're able to see any of it at all inside the cockpit. But, uh, some of it will be visible. So we'll go ahead and take care of that. And there we are with his harness and straps all repainted and I think I like that look much better yeah it looks pretty good all right so we've done a couple of things I fixed the collar on his jacket to brown and also painted uh, the strap that holds his goggles on and we come in and touched up uh, all the black now we're going to use this Model Masters acrylic or acryl um, leather and it's water base as well. Easy cleanup and we will paint his boots. Now I could actually probably skip this because you can't see anything down underneath the instrument panel where his feet are but we're going to go ahead and take care of that. So I've touched up all the black and uh, taking care of those little details. So next up, we're going to use this X22. This is a gloss clear, and I'm going to thin it a little bit with the X20A thinner, just for the airbrush so that it flows smoothly. And once that dries on our figure, we're going to use the brown panel liner again. And just, let me zoom in here. There we go. So with the brown panel liner, it will help define all the details, especially on his flight vest. So this is the same method that you'd use um, panel liner for on armored vehicles or uh, any other kit that you're building. It's just to emphasize and give us some false shadows. And it helps outline anything. And it will also clean up uh, any of these little areas where uh, we didn't exactly get, uh, say, the edge of the strap painted down close to the vest or the 
um, any other little details around the jacket sleeves and stuff. Now once that dries I will go ahead and use uh, the uh, enamel thinner again because our uh, panel liner it is a enamel based product so we can thin that with our enamel thinner so a damp brush just slightly damp and we can just clean up any excess panel liner that we have on on our figure which he needs a name doesn't he let's call him Bob that's Bob the pilot <laughs> so we're gonna get Bob all cleaned up here now once that dries completely we'll go back in with this model master acryl flat clear and we'll give Bob a nice coat of flat and that'll seal all of our work in and take care of all those shiny spots. So next up we're going to use this uh, clear parts cement and window maker by Testers. Just a little bit and I'm really starting to like this stuff and we're just going to use it on a toothpick here and take care of Bob's goggles because the lenses in his goggles should be reflective of light. They should be shiny. A couple of little drops there. Now when this dries it will be completely clear but it'll be nice and glossy and this is the same stuff that we used on our instrument cluster. So once Bob's dry I'm going to take this uh, thick Tamiya cement and just put it in the contact areas in both the pilot seat and on the back of Bob where Bob's going to make contact with the seat and making sure that Bob's all lined up and there we go Bob is in the cockpit Bob looks happy <laughs> And finally, we can do step two. Gosh, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> this is where we put the cockpit uh, and uh, also our engine oil cooler uh, into the fuselage half here. I'm going to start with the cooler. We don't want to forget that. Press it into place, and it is a pretty tight fit, so I'm not too worried about it. A little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, flow around the edge of the part, and that'll secure it. Now, on this center tab where uh, the cockpit rests, I'm going to use the thick cement there. And we're not going to paint or uh, glue the, uh, the very front of the cockpit yet. And now I'm just going to prepare the other side with the thick cement. And we're going to place the halves of the fuselage together. Making sure everything's lined up. So I'm going to use these clamps here, these little modeling clamps. Just to add a little bit of pressure. And that will bring the seam together. Now you're going to want to take time here to make sure that these fuselage halves are lined up as best as you can get them because there, there is a little bit of play there and you just want that seam to be uh, flush. A little bit of pressure will hold it together for us. Just take your time, make sure that you get it lined up. That'll really help us um, later on where we won't have to do any filling or anything. I, at least I hope. <laughs> so this kit is impressive, it really is, for its age. Uh, this kit came out in 1995, I think, and uh, it fits really good so far. So I am impressed with it. So we're just going to glue the top part of the fuselage here, and down the back of the fuselage as well. And this, to me, extra thin, it will just really wick down into that seam so we just want to make sure we got just enough pressure to hold it together and I've got this long nylon brush 
We're going to use that to drop some extra thin down around the front portion of the cockpit. And once we get the glue in there, we'll be able to press this down. As you can see here, it's kind of kind of springy. So that's why I left it to last to glue in. And also, uh, this little tail section of the cockpit area wants to spring out of the fuselage a little bit. So a little bit of pressure on the sides and some to me extra thin. We'll get that lined up. And we'll just let that set up for us. Now I am going to go back in just to the inside. Flow in a little bit of extra thin there. A little bit more holding power. Now we're going to work on the bottom of the, on the fuselage here on this seam. As you can see, it's kind of springy there. So I'm going to have to hold it together until the glue sets up. But we'll just go ahead and put that to me extra thin and it wicks right down in there. And it sets up enough to hold this uh, fairly quick. I do end up putting a clamp on it once I find one, <laughs> one that'll stay onto the cowling there. This being a smooth, slick, tapered surface, it's hard to get, uh, get a clamp to stay. So next up, we're gonna look at the center section and bottom of the uh, fuselage here. I'm trying to make sure that uh, everything's lined up as best we can get it. And this is probably the worst fitting area. It doesn't fit all that bad, but uh, it doesn't fit as good as the rest of it. Which is a good thing because it's right on the very bottom. So if we have any real issues, uh, hopefully it won't be seen. We'll just have to pay special attention to this area. Uh, when we go and clean this up, a little bit of filler probably called for right there where I got the brush. A little bit of pressure. Let the, to me, extra thin set up. And there we have it. So we've got the fuselage together. We've got our uh, cockpit complete, installed with Bob the Pilot. And it's come together very nice. Uh, I'm enjoying this build, uh, but that will do it for this part of the build. Now I do have these seams to take care of, but we'll take care of that in the next video. And as always guys, I appreciate you watching. Special thanks to all my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I keep putting these videos out and I hope you've enjoyed this one. And I'm sure you'll enjoy the next one as well. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, but you like this kind of content, then go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss uh, another video. Speaking of which, if you hit that notification bell, you'll be notified on your YouTube feed as soon as I put out uh, a new video. And also, feel free to leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. And if you have any suggestions or remarks on this build, uh, that would be fantastic. Um, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> so uh, feel free to leave me uh, a message uh, and I will answer you straight away. So stay safe and I will see you in the next one.